So we're going to look at um, landscapes um, during the next 10 weeks. So um, a few of you have said I'd like to be a bit more experimental. So um, we are, we're going to start off um, a little bit experimental, but we're going to do some drawing as well to get us kind of warmed up and things and get us into the subject and that as well. Um, I've asked you to bring along some uh, collage materials as well. Um, basically, um, you're just going to collage a, a small part of your picture uh, of your uh, paper um, in order to then draw over the top of it. Um, now, obviously, with glue and things, it dry it needs to dry. So you might want to start on the drawing part of it uh, first, um, and then um, add some collage materials afterwards. What I what I did yesterday is I collaged it, put it on a heater for a few minutes, and it dried really quickly. I've got a little um, oil heater in my studio here, so I used that to do that. Um, uh, but basically we're going to start off with some drawing, so you'll need your um, pencils. Um, uh, other things that you might have that we've used previously are the um, the blending sticks, which are these sticks made from uh, like condensed paper that you can use to smudge areas with control. But if you haven't got one of those, you can always use uh, a cotton bud or even just a piece of tissue or something like that. Um, and then the other thing that you might want to use today is, which I now can't find, of course, is a putty rubber as well. So if you use a putty rubber, they're really, ah, there it is. A putty rubber is great uh, because you can stretch it, you can change the shape of it, and you can remove areas of graphite. So, um, and you, a lot of you will know about that. The other thing that I'm using today is uh, graphite sticks. So I've got this really chunky 9B one, which is really lovely and dark. So you can use that too. But over the next few weeks, what we'll do is we'll experiment with um, mark making techniques on pieces of paper. And then what I'd like to try out is collaging with the paper that you've then made marks on and then work back over the top of that. So we're going to get really experimental um with things we're going to use acrylic paints and things as well a bit later on not today but in the next few weeks oh and uh, i thought we'd try a little bit of charcoal next week so um i know that a lot of you will have charcoal too um from the last uh lessons that we did but if you haven't uh the really nice things you can get are charcoal pencils like this they offer quite a lot of control you can get them in gray white and black um uh, if anyone wants me to, I'll put a, a link uh, to where you can get those on Amazon and things. But we don't need those until next week. All right, so I'll go over to my wall over here. So um, I've put on, you'll notice on the website, I've put a few sheets on there that um, talk about uh, clouds and things and how to tackle clouds. Uh, which is something I thought we'd work on uh, a little bit, which is why a lot of the photos that you'll find on the website there um, do have these very atmospheric um, landscapes with lots of clouds and things on. OK, now, um, before I get on to that, I've put on here a few um, pictures that I've painted previously to give you an idea of what we will be doing um, uh, in uh, over the next few weeks. So let me just um, order. That's what I need to do. Move to the top there. I had a bit of a problem with this yesterday because all the pictures kept going behind each other. So now found out how to make sure they're on top. But this one, this lovely uh, painting that I did quite a long time ago, um, you can see um, I've uh, based it all on uh, these kind of um, Hebridean uh, Scottish uh, landscapes. Um, but within uh, and underneath a lot of this, um, there are lots of different materials. So if I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see on here that we've got um, things like textured wallpapers. We've got bits of fabric. You can see just the edge of the fabric down the bottom there. Um, and pieces of cardboard and all sorts of things have been applied onto the surface before then I painted it. I also put bits of words and text in there, which is one of my favourite things to do, and also little bits of maps. So we're going to start off with that kind of idea um, uh, today. So I'll just show the other 
little painting before I show you a few drawings that I've done previously. So uh, this one, I don't think it'll be on top, but we can see pretty much. Just move it to the top. Move to top. There we go. Right. So on this one, you can clearly see that there are little bits of collage going underneath, and I've actually left some of those little bits of collage revealed uh, um, through the paint as well. Uh, and you can see there's bits of string and bits of fabric and all sorts of stuff in there, um, which we can um, experiment with as well as using the collage ideas that I've got uh, lined up for us. OK, so um, let's just shrink that back down again and make it really small. Now, um, this one, which I think is more or less on top. Um, I was just going to talk a little bit about how I tackle landscape, um, particularly with mark making and line. Um, on here, you can see, I mean, obviously this is a pen drawing or pencil drawing, but you can see how I direct the marks in, in different directions to get a sense of either uh, the movement or the depth in the picture. So here down the bottom there with the grasses, I've been very deliberate about how I uh, use the marks to create a sense of the grass. So um, we've got the lines sort of fanning um, up from the grasses here. And then uh, as we move up, you can see the cross hatching goes in two directions uh, diagonally. Um, on the cloud area. So it's getting really close with that. You can see that the lines here have been used to get a sense of the um, the landscape or the cloudscape here by doing lots of cross hatching. So this is what you call, I think, a strata of clouds uh, on the uh, landscape. And then the other one, which is a little bit more intentional as far as um, the direction of the clouds go and the light and so forth, um, let's just move that one up. I'm still getting used to this. Right, here we go. So this one, is, these are both sketchbook drawings, by the way. So here you can see that um, it really helps to create a sense of movement in a landscape if you're directing uh, the marks and things that you're using. So um, on the mountains here, most of the lines are going in this kind of diagonal sort of uh, direction but in the clouds they're all going uh, in one direction here but with varying tones and sometimes um, I've added a little bit of some sun rays coming through the clouds there as well. So um, a couple of examples of that you'll find on the worksheet that I put on the website as well. So we'll go down here for this one in particular. Move the top. There we go. Right, so this one, uh, these are some drawing examples that I've put together from the internet. And again, you can see the way the clouds have been drawn using directional mark making. So all the lines going in one direction to, again, get a sense of the direction the clouds are moving in and all this sort of thing, but also changing the depth by adding more layers of the graphite on top. And let's have a close look at this one here. So this one, again, we've got the lines all going in a similar direction, but um, purposefully leaving some areas for rays of colour of, um, of light coming through. And these ones are more charcoal-y kind of ones, which is why I thought it'd be great to look at charcoal. Um, because you can, with a putty rubber, you can, you, you can uh, remove uh, lots of the charcoal to re reveal the white of the paper underneath and get these really sil nice silver lining effects and things on the clouds too and here's a similar sort of effect here so if you want to have a, look, a closer look at those they're on the website you can download those right okay let's just shrink that down again Whoop, like that and this one move that on top and the last one i'm going to show you now let's put that on top <laughs> Right, so on here, there's a few more examples of drawings, but also different types of clouds. So we've got this um, cumulus um, drawing over here. So often the clouds have sunlight on the top of them. Uh, so you get these kind of puffy sort of clouds on here. 
and then underneath they're often uh, darker. So basically, it's, you know, as you know, clouds are basically water um, in the sky and uh, the darker bits are, the, are where the shadows are um, underneath those um, clouds. So you can draw those more as objects and things on, on there. And then over here, we've got, again, this kind of directional flow of the, uh, the lines as well or the uh, shadow on here and that was done in charcoal as well and then the stratus um, which i talked about underneath so i just thought i'd show you that those sheets just to sort of uh, show you that they're on there there's a few examples of um, turner pictures and constable pictures on the other worksheet but um i've talked enough about those now so we'll go over to the um to the desktop have a look there Right, okay, so I'll just zoom out a little bit. Here's an example of one, uh, a landscape that I did um, previously uh, in uh, one of our classes. Um, I'll just turn me off for a minute. Um, there you go. Right, so uh, we can see here uh, a landscape that I've done. So often uh, choosing uh, the right sort of landscape, a good, interesting landscape is really important. You'll see loads of them on the website that you can choose from today. But um, in the foreground, we have lots of um, really strong detail. And then as we move towards the back up here to create this um, atmosphere or atmospheric perspective, creating that sense of distance in the picture, often the background is much lighter and more indistinct because there's a lot of um, uh, light uh, and particles of dust or rain or whatever it is between us and the foreground. So often the background is much um, softer and I've used um, a blending stick to help me to soften these areas uh, towards the back. And then in the foreground, we've got some very distinctive uh, hatching and um, uh, lines and details and scribbles and so forth in the foreground to create that sense of space and distance within the picture okay now this is um <laughs> this is uh what i was doing last night um so i really liked this um landscape here for the atmosphere and the detail in the front and we've got a little little tree up here and these beautiful dark mountains and clouds so i started off um drawing this um, last night I've still got quite a lot of work to do um, so this was my version of it now what I'd like you to start with um, if you've got some stuff that you would like to um, collage um, is you can get some little bits of um, material that you have perhaps got if you haven't got them don't worry too much um, but what I've done is I've basically got this old map of Snowdonia that I got from school many years ago and um, think about being purposeful about where you want things to go so um, I had a beautiful drawing uh, from a student last night and some of the paper was kind of a bit a little bit random about where it was put um, and consider the shape of the pieces of paper that you want to use so on this landscape here the the land tends to go across like that so i'm tearing thinner pieces of paper just um pin my screen there you go so i'm tearing thinner pieces of paper that would match this kind of shape of the landscape or the the composition itself um, and then i get a bit of pva now the PVA, when it dries, um, can affect how well the graphite goes down onto the um, onto the surface. So, what I recommend you do if you want to avoid that is put your glue on the back of your paper like this, and then glue it down on the surface rather than put lots of glue on the paper and then glue over the top. That way, you'll maintain the surface quality of the paper and you'll be able to shade over it just as easily. And avoid any uh, glossy paper as well. So um, what it does basically is it adds a bit of interest. It gets us experimenting quite quickly and early with this idea of building up lots of layers 
of um, materials and we're going to create sheets with lots of mark making on then we're going to cut those up and tear those to create a landscape a bit later on so just to zoom in a little bit you can see how dark um, how dark I've shaded it towards the back I've used a blending stick to um, blend these areas and make them smoother and then as we move down through the mid ground there's lots more um, scratchy sort of marks on here and then as I've moved down further I've got some directional lines because the landscape has got this kind of flowing um, water on it which is um, you can see just down the bottom of the picture just there so I'm building up layers I've still got loads to do on this one so that's um, what we'll be doing now um, before we go on with that, I'm just going to explain for anyone who doesn't know um, how to um, grid your picture to make um, to help you draw it more accurately. So if you're ready to get started and you don't need to see this um, because you've seen me explain this a few times, then um, by all means get started and I'll just go through um, this for those that need it. So here's your, if you printed off your photograph, sometimes it helps to cut the white border off of the outside. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that on there. So first of all, take a piece of paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, fold it in half again. Make sure you've got clear folds on there. Open it up. And then next thing, get your pencil in the middle of the page like that or wherever you want it. I've got A3 paper. This is an A4 print. But if you only got A4 paper, cartridge paper, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to go any bigger than that for this um, exercise, unless you want to, of course. So put some little dots around the folds of the paper that we've, oh, sorry, that we've made and on the corners and that will really quickly give you the marks that you need to make uh, to help you make a grid the same size as your um, photo and basically what that does is it breaks the picture down into smaller sections for you to help you then focus on an individual area and get the accuracy um, in your drawing. So I'll show you that again as well in a second. There we go. So I've got a grid there. Uh, there you go. You can just about see it. And now what I can do, of course, is I can use this grid to help me draw each section of the picture. So um, one nice way of doing that is to literally fold it up, put it on the square or the rectangle that you're working from, and then make a few marks that show exactly where different features go. Um, so I've made a few marks on here where this mountain is and where the background mountains are. And then I've got some sort of place to get started on that particular section so I can start just putting that in there like that and there's another one that kind of finishes over here and then this mountain this lovely black dark mountain is just up towards the back there finishes down there and then I can fold it open and match it up again like that and then the other one comes here like that so um when you're doing this the best thing to do is to um get the large shapes first of all um because those large shapes will actually show you where all the other little tiny bits uh and other features will go uh later on so basically you're building up um, the areas of your picture gradually so first of all get all the big shapes in so on my drawing I got um, I got this area in first of all and this area so I've got these big chunks so I've got the foreground 
the mid ground and the background in okay and then um, once I'd done that I felt that I had um, enough information to then start filling in some of those details using um, shading and mark making and so forth okay so I'll I'll talk through a little bit um, as I work on this so you get an idea about how that works but it will all be on video if you want to watch any of it again okay right so does anyone have any questions about what to do at um at this point is everybody happy i suppose is my question 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 uh, hello are you happy i do that oh hold on um let me just get you on the screen uh, you... oh. it's not letting me do that hold on a minute you you oh yeah absolutely yeah that looks like a good picture to do because it's got lots of detail lots of contrast and things in it so that would be absolutely fine okay yeah. uh, there aren't any clouds in it but i suppose you can always put some in yeah 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 the clouds was uh something because um a lot of people do ask about clouds and and things how do you tackle clouds or how do you paint clouds and so forth so i've added a little bit of information on that um in today's lesson Jane, are you okay? Um, yeah, I'm having print problems, so I couldn't print anything off last night. I've just tried to do it again; it's still not working. So I'm just going to have to um, draw mine. I'm afraid. Did um, with you? Is it to do with ink or something, or is it when no, you? No, I don't know. We sometimes we do have print problems. Oh, okay. We have to get a new one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I'm just I can draw mine. Yeah. Today, and yeah. I'll have another go. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So if you've got it up on screen and things, um, you yeah. should you should be able to draw it quite well. Um, I suppose what you could do is. Um, have you got the pic which picture have you chosen? Um, I've chosen the one yeah. with the tree. Oh, with the one with the tree, the dark sky. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a popular one. Um, what I'll try and do in a minute for you is I'll go on my computer and I'll put a grid onto it for you and okay, thank you. and send it to you and then maybe you can um, access That's it. And you that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll try and do that for you because um, it, it shouldn't take me too long. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. Um, is everybody else okay? Thumbs up all round. Okay. I'll go and have a look at that for you now, Jane.
go, Jane. I've sent it to you. Should be on your email. Thank you. That's brilliant. I'll have a look for it. Yeah, and then you can draw it to A4. Yeah. Yeah. And divide it in the same way that I did uh, with the paper photo. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay, no worries. So if you um, divide that paper by folding it in the same way, um, perhaps that would work. yeah uh, mary hi mary um i are you sort of cross hatching your uh your clouds uh in or... with these i'll show you um what i did on on here um what i did is i used the side of my pencil uh like this and then shaded it and then i got my this I got this um, blending stick and used it and it goes and it blends really nicely then um, obviously you can use a piece of paper or a tissue or something like that and then what I do after that so that's not the end of it what I'll do then is I'll work back into it and I do try to include some lines like I showed you in the drawings um, because it just gives that sense of direction. So I might do some of this, a little bit of hatching in there as well. Um, and that then just keep building it up because, oh, I'm getting a bit closer, actually. You can see that. Lovely. See what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you get that sense of um, um, direction in the landscape, but you also get... Um, the the deep kind of um, tonal range in there too right. so the more uh, with graphite the more you layer the graphite on top of um, graphite if you see what I mean like this the yeah. more you put it on top the darker and more intense it's going to be even when you think you've got it as dark as it can be the more graphite you put on top it'll it'll really intensify it even more right and I what um, pencil are you using you yeah use to be. Right, so the one I just used a minute ago was a 4B, um, but I would start off with um, a 2B, which is I've got here, and um, also I have been using a HB, which is a standard sort of pencil, because a HB will give you a finer mark and it won't smudge quite as much as something like a, a 4B or a 2B would. Um, uh, and then um, I've also got this, which is my um, graphite pencil right. um, or stick, really. Um, and that that's a really soft one. That's a 9B, um, which I've used on my drawing uh, only because um, I found that once I put the glue on on there, it was harder to shade. So I, I used the 9B and put it down quite heavily so that I could get this really nice dark darkness on the on the picture that you can see there right, lovely thank all right you. so you can switch between the pencils as you work and you'll find that you um you start using the pencils quite naturally for different things yeah, lovely thank you all right it's very it's very interesting because 
um looking at looking at all these um all of the clouds seems to go um from left to right i mean and me being left-handed yeah i start the other way around so yeah same <laughs> Okay, so um, here you can see um, you can see all the bits of collage that I um, put in the background before I started drawing. You can also see the grid on there, but um, you can see how also, uh, and this might help you um, with drawing, is I folded the actual photograph that I'm working from, um, and then I can work out where the main shapes are. So just just now I explained that most of the rocks and the waterfall. Uh, fitted into one particular shape uh, in the composition. So I've drawn some very clear basic lines to help me just remember where those things are going. Um, and also drawn the mountain range at the back and um, pretty much now I'm ready to move on with this piece of work. So um, the first thing to do of course is to draw out the main shapes, draw out the larger shapes of the composition and then start to um, apply your tone and shadow. Now I was really keen, as I said before, um, to shade in and work into the background of this composition um, because I really enjoy the dramatic um, clouds and uh, the deep shadows on the mountain range at the back. So I'm using just a little bit of basic tone over the top I uh, often use the side of my pencil. You can see I'm just holding the pencil underneath uh, my hand. I'm also smudging it now um, as well, or um, blending it a little bit using my um, blending pencil that I talked around earlier. Pencils that I use throughout the whole of this drawing are um, a 9B graphite um, pencil, which you see me with now. And I also use a 4B pencil, a 2B pencil, a HB and occasionally also a couple of H pencils. So the H pencils will give you, um, and the HB will give you much finer kind of um, um, marks and shading on your picture. Less likely to smudge as well because the softer the pencil, the higher the B that is, the more smudgy and graphite-y, <laughs> if, if that's a word, your pencil will be. So you can smudge much easily the softer pencils. What I do recommend though is that you start off um, quite lightly, even with the darkest areas of your picture. Um, that's purely because you can work out exactly where things go, the shapes of the shadows or the tones that you're putting in quite gradually and then you can build back over with some darker tones because one thing about pencil drawing is that it um, you can layer lots of the tones and shadows on top of each other and the textures to create a layered effect in your drawing and you can use uh, things like I'm doing just there um, putty rubber to take out um, some areas of tone and shadow in your picture as well as you're working and you can also draw with your um, with your putty rubber to put lines and details and little bits of texture back in to the picture which are perhaps lighter than other areas. So I'm just working down there on the bushy areas. You can see I'm using like um, some dots and dashes and broken lines on the surface of that hillside um, in the mid ground of the picture just there as well. So a blending stick and um, a putty rubber are great materials to use um, to help you produce your drawing. You can see I'm still folding the picture. Sometimes it helps to fold the picture just so you can get really, uh, you can just focus on one area at a time in your image as well when you're drawing in this way. Um, as I said earlier, um, you can use a grid to draw out your picture, but if you prefer um, just to draw it straight off. You can also do that, of course. Um, and uh, it does sometimes give you a little bit of chance to add a bit of um, your own sort of take on things as well um, if you're not drawing from a grid. So sometimes people find a grid a little bit um, tight and a little bit um, restricting. So sometimes it's nice just to go and be loose um, 
and use your intuition and your feelings to guide the way that you're working which um, you particularly get when you've been working on a picture for a while you kind of get into what we refer to as the flow of your drawing so you'll see me building up lots of different uh, layers and marks on this picture as we progress with the water just is the little bit of the water that I'm putting in there um, you can use the directional marks that we've talked about previously um, so think about the direction the feel um, of the picture so if you want all for instance all the clouds to feel like they're being swept across the sky then use directional marks or shading um, to represent that as you're drawing you can see here I've, I've I put in the pencil lines or the shape the pencil shadow in by shading it in just one direction um, diagonally across the sky and then I've used the blending stick back over the top of that and then later on as the drawing progresses I go back into it and use a HB pencil to put in some lines um, I also do that on the bushes in the mid-ground, which is just above where I'm working uh, right now. So you can see the map areas that I collaged onto the drawing are getting covered up. Um, one little tip with that is just put the glue on the bottom of your paper when you stick it onto the uh, surface of the paper there. That's purely because um, the glue can create a, a barrier between your pencil and the surface um, that you want to draw on so don't put glue on top of the paper if you don't want that to um, affect the way the graphite goes on so the graphite looks a bit lighter when you put it on the surface which is why I reverted back to a really soft graphite stick which is a 9b to do this drawing you can see I'm putting the lines in there as well and maybe using the um, using the uh, putty rubber to take areas back out again and add a bit more texture just down there so um, this is on Tuesday now um, you can see the, the drawings looking quite atmospheric and everything already I've still got the other half of the picture to keep going and working on um, I do find that um, I enjoy uh, somebody asked me this in the lesson I enjoy working in background areas because I, I really love the atmospheric uh, kind of feel that you can create with the light and so forth in the background um, but um, it is also very satisfying when it comes to the foreground and getting all the much sharper more detailed areas in because it brings the whole composition together so this is me just explaining that I use lots of dashes dots and scribbles um, this worksheet is available on the website so that you can have a look at some of the marks that I use to do my drawing I'm just showing a few examples of cross hatching how you don't have to cross hatch vertically and horizontally literally you can just adjust the angle of your cross hatching a little bit too so that was a previous drawing I did from a couple of classes ago <coughs> So you can see how the maps get covered up and I've still got a little way to go on that but um, using broken lines on the mid ground there and shading in some of the other areas um, and the thing to keep constantly looking back at your photos so that you um, stay you know it help it trains you to keep looking at what you're drawing uh, in order to get as close as you can now there here there was some bushes which had a really nice sort of curved shape because they went tucked under the stream or river and then came around so I was using lots of dashes going upwards and around for that um, and here you can see how I just used the blending stick and the putty rubber to take areas out so I was just explaining to a student that um, a way of starting off so you start off with the sky and then put the foreground areas in so it is actually quite a good idea to work from the background uh, into the foreground because you get the the background and then the foreground can go uh, the midground can go over it and then the foreground can go over that 
a good detailed foreground leads you into the background of the picture often. So just putting in some broken lines and dashes and some dots for all the scrubby sort of um, tufts of foliage on the mountain or the hill in the background there. And here I decided I wanted to get some stronger highlights on this little bush at the back. So I used a bit of um, white paint on there just on a rubber silicon uh, tip. Um, and I do that a lot more on the foreground as we progress through um, this part of the, the drawing. Um, the thing is, when um, your acrylic paint is dry, you can also shade back over it as well. So if some of your white areas of acrylic are a little bit harsh, you can just knock them down a little bit to soften them as well. So I'm using these flowing, um, almost horizontal marks uh, in the water to suggest the movement of the water. The photograph that we used um, in this drawing, or I used in this drawing, has got a little bit of um, time lapse in it. Um, not time lapse, um, but a longer exposed picture to make the water look like it's flowing a little bit more. So as the background's quite still and most of the detail's quite still, the water is moving. So if you open the camera shutter for a little bit longer, um, you get these kind of lovely blurry movement kind of marks in there as well. But um, yeah, so we can see it's taking shape a little bit more now. Um, sometimes you can see the reflection of the light on the surface of the paper. That's something that does happen quite a lot when you're doing a pencil drawing on the camera. So um, I shall put a picture of the final drawing up on the website at some point too. So, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, if you keep going over areas, you can darken them right down. You can layer different marks on top of each other. So you saw me just a second ago going back over with the 9B. So here I'm just emphasizing some of the water coming over the surface and the nice thing about drawing in with acrylic in this case was that you can use, I am using a silicon tip to create marks with the um, with the end of that tip over the paint. So I'm drawing into the paint that I apply at the same time and then just at the back there I'm just going back over it so I'm constantly looking at the whole picture and the effect that uh, the different marks and the overall tones are having. It starts to look like it's coming together now I think. You see me lift the picture up there so I can get a better view of it um, in the light. So with this now I'm using a HB to get some really much finer marks uh, on the tops of the bushes. So I'm just using the tip of that fine, you can just about see the little dots and things that I'm putting in uh, onto the top of the bushes to mimic um, the leaves, but I'm not necessarily sticking exactly to the leaves uh, on there in the direction they're going. I'm trying to do directional marks as well, going diagonally from the bottom right to the left top to um, to sort of give that sense of movement and um, to give the picture something more of a bit of me, I suppose. And that's one of the things about drawing is we do all have our own, it's a bit like handwriting, we have our own style and things eventually when we start to work in, when you start to find yourself a little bit um, as you work, you start to put your, a bit of yourself into um, pictures as well. So I'm feeling a bit more happier about this now. Uh, it took quite a while to get to this stage, but I'm pretty pleased uh, with the results. Um, in a second, you'll see me darken the hills down a little bit um, in the background as well, um, because on the photograph, at least in the corner of the screen, you can just see there, some of the hills I felt were a bit darker and on my printed um, picture. Often when you print out a picture from a printer, it comes out a bit lighter. There you go, look, I'm just adding some extra tone over the background hill, just there.
All right, so we're just about there with that picture. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, lesson and um, I'll see you next week. Don't forget we're going to be looking at perhaps using an experiment with a bit of charcoal uh, and then we'll be launching into creating some different textures and things that we can later collage with. So have a lovely week, enjoy the sun and enjoy the shops now they're back open again and I'll see you um, in the next lesson I guess. And don't forget to share your work on Facebook so we can all see how you're getting on and that too.